The Freedom Rides were an important part of the civil rights movement in the 60s. Now, a battle rages in America regarding the civil rights of unborn babies. Ride with us today as we embark on this bus on a pro-life Freedom Ride. It'll be a history lesson as well as a blueprint for the future. Stay with us. Dr. Alveda King is the niece of Martin Luther King Jr. and a strong voice within the pro-life community. Along with others, Alveda conceived the idea to hold a pro-life freedom ride. It builds on the method the civil rights movement effectively used over 40 years ago. Back then, 13 students boarded a bus in Washington, D.C. and headed for New Orleans to test the new civil rights law. I caught up with Alveda in Knoxville, Tennessee the day before the ride. She shared more about the history of the original Freedom Riders. This is a pro-life Freedom Ride that is also attached to the past Civil Rights Freedom Rides. Tell me about the law that they were testing and exactly what they did back then. The Civil Rights Law and uh, to say that going across state lines you had to no longer uh, keep people or discriminate against people from staying in hotels and eating and drinking and all of those things that were human rights. And so those civil rights laws that were emerging in the 1960s, the students wanted to test that. So black individuals took buses that they normally wouldn't be able to take? They would not be able to take those buses. They would not be able to drink out of certain water fountains. They would not be able to stay in certain hotels prior to uh, these laws being passed. And so they rode the buses to test out transportation, to test out interstate laws. Uh, one bus was firebombed. Really? Uh-huh, and some lost their lives, yeah. So would you say it was a breakthrough for civil rights that that tumultuous period? Those freedom rides by those students was a breakthrough, just like Rosa Parks refusing uh, her seat, uh, to give up her seat on the bus because of her skin color, like Martin Luther King Jr. with the I Have a Dream speech. All of those were uh, very uh, highly charged times, and they were all interconnected. Father Frank Pavone is the National Director of Priests for Life and Alveda's partner in creating the Pro-Life Freedom Rides. For many years, Father Frank and Ovita have worked to focus on the connection of the civil rights movement of the 1960s with the fight to end abortion. By instituting the pro-life freedom rides, they hope to illustrate the important link between the two movements. I was able to sit down with Father Frank in the midst of preparations for the ride's festivities. We said, why don't we ride for freedom? We said the ride itself is a beautiful symbol of our movement. Let's ride for freedom for the unborn. And it's one thing to think about the fight against segregation and how, how that really was a fight for the dignity of human life. I, I mean, doc, doc, and Dr. King said that. He said, we're not just fighting for the black man. We're fighting for every man, every person. And our purpose was, was to, to uh, first of all, to put into people's awareness that there is, in fact, a deep connection between these two movements. Ultimately, really, are, they are one movement. And just the fact that we're having Freedom Rides makes people begin thinking and talking about the connection between pro-life movement and civil rights movement. Now, as we're talking right now, we can hear them uh, doing sound checks up in the theater upstairs. Tell me a little bit about the specifics of what we'll see tonight. This is going to be a, a prayer and praise rally. We're going to have speeches, of course, and uh, Alveda King and I will address the participants. Uh, it will be a lot of music. And then, of course, prayer, exhortation, encouragement. That's the purpose of the rally. Uh, and that will bring people together. And then we'll get them ready to actually do the events of the next day, which will include praying at an abortion facility and then getting on the buses and going to Chattanooga. And uh, on the Freedom Ride bus, we can fit 25 leaders. So we'll have the leaders on the bus, and then people will follow in their own vehicle. So we'll have a pro-life caravan uh, going from point A to point B, in this case, Knoxville to Chattanooga, where we will then have a service of hope and healing. When we return, we'll board the pro-life Freedom Ride bus and hear how minorities are being directly targeted by the abortion industry. Look around you. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. 
This Emmy Award winning show tackles challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, and adoption, and shows every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. The Knoxville Chattanooga Pro-Life Freedom Ride was the second of its kind. The first took place this past summer as riders traveled from Birmingham to Atlanta. At the closing ceremony in Atlanta, riders came face to face with pro-abortion opposition. But this didn't faze Dr. Alita King. She's used to facing opposition from members of the African American community who don't believe they're being targeted by the abortion industry. That was a massive pro protest against the pro-life freedom ride. And so that's how in, in Atlanta the pro-life freedom rides became even a more national issue. People began to really know more about us. I'm curious to hear more in detail of what the pro-abortion comments were. What was their answer to your concerns about the genocide of the black community? Alveda King is hijacking the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I've been accused all summer of hijacking the dream. And a lot of people don't even know that my uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was pro-life. He said the Negro cannot win if he's willing to sacrifice the future of his children for immediate personal comfort and safety. He said injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. He said don't be like the Romans who committed infanticide, warning that that could destroy a civilization. And so his wife was pro-abortion. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was pro-life. While aboard the Pro-Life Freedom Rides bus, I had a chance to talk with several leaders about the significance of this ride as it relates to the civil rights movement. Some had very personal connections to the pro-life ride. Others addressed how the abortion industry is targeting their own community. I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee. When the Freedom Ride was going from Knoxville to Chattanooga, I saw Walter, I said, we have to be on the bus because I have to go back home. I haven't been there in 25 years. Oh, really? Wow. And I want to see it because um, being pro-life and being from Tennessee is um, interesting. And for me, the tough, well, I mean, it's interesting and in my history is I was a child that was conceived in rape. And so if abortion had been legal 51 years ago, I know I would be sick here. And so to be able to be a part of the freedom and stand for pro-life and going back home, it was just a whole lot of things just came together and I just knew I had to do. Walter, why are you on this bus today? Uh, in the early 60s, in the 60s, my family marched with Dr. Martin Luther King in Detroit and in Chicago. Uh, I'm on this bus today because it's an honor for me, a privilege as a matter of fact, to be a part of a movement that is still ongoing. While we gained some ground in the 60s, uh, the new civil rights movement today is completely immersed in a life issue. Catherine, what significance do you feel that this ride today has as far as the civil rights movement and the old freedom rights? At the founding of America, we had the god-awful practice of slavery. And to justify um, um, the slave treatment, the Supreme Court of the United States said that black people weren't people, they were property. So we got the 14th Amendment that said, no, 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 they're people. So then the Supreme Court said, well, they might be people, but um, they're separate but equal. And finally, a um, hundred years later, <laughs> um, the Congress said, no, 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 we're not going to have separate but equal. We are going to enforce the laws and blacks have an equal right to education, employment, and every other means of life in the United States. So what did our illustrious Supreme Court do? They redefined the baby as not being a person, but being um, something, an object that could be dealt with through the abortion process. So at every step of the way in the history of this country, how America has treated her citizens has been at issue. Once again, we have it at issue with abortion. I am here riding because 
we are asking for the freedom, especially for the mini minorities, you know, because we are targeting, you know, especially, you know, the Afro-American and the, the Hispanics. Just look at the black community where I'm at in Georgia, 60% almost 60 percent of the abortions done in the state of georgia are on black women how could that be so are you hoping that this freedom ride will bring awareness to that issue of course you know definitely you know because he's the same you know it's the same civil right movement you know in the past only was discriminated because the color of the skin mm -hmm. today is because the the size this is the same you know but now it's worse because you know in the past, at least Afro-American brothers, they had the opportunity to, to you know, to, to have a, to, a loud voice and, and cry. But, you know, the unborn baby is there in the womb of their mothers. So we, you and me and, and you, we are all the voice of these babies. Coming up, we'll hear how the theme of the Tennessee ride was supportive of post-abortive women. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to facinglife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. The Tennessee Freedom Ride had one special difference from the first pro-life freedom ride. Its main theme was the freedom of healing. The ride and speakers focused on the freedom that comes for post-abortive women and men through healing. The theme culminated in a moving closing ceremony at the Memorial for the Unborn in Chattanooga. Chattanooga is the home to the National Memorial for the Unborn. It is a, a former abortion center, former killing center that has been transformed now into a place where, first of all, there's a pregnancy center connected with it, but the memorial itself is a room that it, it has the feel of a, of a chapel, and on the walls are little plaques, hundreds of them, that have been inscribed with messages from moms and dads and other family members to children who were killed by abortion, expressions of, of, of grief and regret, expressions of hope and of commitment for the future, expressions really of what it's going to mean when we have a culture of life in America and in the world. And that's why we want to go there, because our, our dual theme, if you will, for this particular Freedom Ride is, is freedom uh, of healing. Proclaim to those who've had abortions that we who reject abortion do not reject you. We reach out to you. We, we want to embrace you. We want to give you peace and forgiveness. So freedom of healing. And then freedom from the oppressive laws and policies that allow abortion to continue. I really want to speak to those who have had abortions, men and women. Because when a, a father or a mother decides to have an abortion, they have to embrace a lie. Uh, they have to deny that they are a mother or father. And of course, the, the moment that child's conceived, we know that they are a mother and father. They have to embrace the lie uh, that this child does not have the dignity and the rights and that their life should be defended. And not many people think of the father of an aborted baby, so give me your perspective on that if you could. When they realize the full gravity of what has happened, what is most painful to them is that they did not protect the life of that child. They realize that they, they violated something fundamental uh, in, in their identity as a man and as a father. And that's what's most painful to them and that's what's most in need of healing. Um, this is my second Freedom Ride. I came out um, with Silent No More a year ago in January. 
Um, I'm post-abortive 22 years and decided that it was time to speak out for those that can't. People need to know the trauma and, and the pressure that goes on after something like this has happened. I mean, I've literally lived half my life in fear because of what's happened. And so this is, because of this, I'm finally able to come out and speak about what has happened. From your personal perspective, give us an idea of what we will experience once we get to Chattanooga. <laughs> this is going to be a, um, an interesting experience for me as well. Um, today will be a day that I dedicate my daughter, um, her name, to the actual wall. Um, so I know that that's part of what we can expect today. Specifically, how are you going to do that? Um, I'll give a testimony as to my abortion experience, um, a little bit of a memorial to my daughter, and then there will actually be a nameplate that we will place on the wall with the other children that have been honored, that have been um, aborted. What by their your, parents. What's your daughter's name? Lily Gabrielle. Beautiful. Thank you. I'd like you to speak briefly to the woman who's watching today that is struggling with a past abortion in her life. Know that you're not alone, that there are resources out there that you can either remain confidential or you can work your way through and, and be out like I am doing some public speaking. Um, it doesn't matter what resource you use, just use it and don't continue to suffer any longer. Leaders of the Pro-Life Freedom Rides hope to continue their effort. With two successful rides under their belts, they're scouting out cities for future locations of rides. So far, cities for the rides have been picked based on the historical significance and help from local leadership. But geographic diversity is also a goal. Just because the ride hasn't come to your city doesn't mean you can't get involved. The event, the local events that we will have are essentially symbolic of what the entire movement does and will continue to do. In other words, we want the local event to be a call to all Americans to become pro-life freedom riders. Now, you become a pro-life freedom rider by undertaking the pro-life activities We've established a whole list of activities that people can do right from home, from their own churches, and in their own groups that constitute freedom activities uh, and will make them part of this, this movement of being a freedom rider for the unborn. You can have your own ride in your own city. And so pray, participate, uh, donate. I mean, there are many things you can do. Have your own ride, have your own prayer rally, have a screening and a viewing and a discussion. So there are many ways that you can join us. You know, being bold, you know, especially, you know, in front of the abortion mills. You know, I have a beautiful, you know, we are now in the 40 days of life campaign. You know, I have a, a beautiful testimony of somebody that he, he, uh, he has been, you know, in front of, of abortion mill for 20 years. And he, he was beginning to think, oh, probably this is not working anymore for me. And you know, a woman came the next day to him and said, hey, you know, five years ago, I, I came here to this, this abortion meal. I saw you here, and this is my baby. There are those who can't be with us today on the Freedom Ride, but they want to get involved in the movement, and they're really not sure what one person can do. What advice do you have for them? Well, in the very beginning, I thought I was only going to be one person, too. Um, this, it's, it's only been a year since I attended Rachel's Vineyard. It'll be a year Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and I never believed a year ago if you would have told me I would be where I am today. Um, I would never have believed it. So each time one person speaks up, another 10 may be following them. Um, because of, there's people that will be here from Birmingham today here to support me. People that, that find out once what you've been through, what you stand for, and you educate them. The tools are there, the prayers are there, people will follow. In a moment, we'll hear from the ride's leaders about the impact of the Pro-Life Freedom Rides. Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on.
The pro-life Freedom Rides are a true testament to the courage and success of the Freedom Riders of the 1960s. They're a way to mobilize the pro-life movement and bring awareness to African Americans, specifically about the genocide of their community and abortion's connection to the civil rights movement of the 60s. Leaders of this ride hope to see abortion viewed as an undeniable human rights issue. What impact, Walt, well, do you think this ride will have on the movement? This ride is significant. Uh, one, it's the second ride. It shows it's continuing. It shows that we have a motivation and that we have the momentum moving with us. This is just a continuation of it. And so this ride, in some ways, is even more significant than the first one. It's, it's one thing to do it once and then done, but we're not done. And this will continue until we are done, until we bring abortion to an end. I think it'll have a significant um, impact on the movement as other people see that we're still encouraged, we're still 